Summer in February, which I know you had the the star and producer on the sister program that you present. No, my my radio two, radio two show award winning drive time spectacular. Dan Stevens you're talking about. is another tale of an artisan community. This one, which is shot in Cornwall, set in the Mourner artists uh, community in the early twentieth century. So Florence Carterwood, Emily Browning is this innocent waif who comes to Cornwall and she's wooed by a. What are you making gestures at? Just ordering a ordering a Radio Two. I was just reminding our is that what you were doing? Our disruptive production team. I see. Who frankly, should have better things to do than make sarcasm. Can you comments. not disrupt Simon when I'm Thank you. talking to him? Thank you very much. Thank I hope you. the camera is on that at the moment. So Florence Carter Wood. She comes to Cornwall. She's wooed by on the one hand AJ Monnings, who's played by Dominic Cooper. On the other hand, Gilbert Evans, played by Dan Stevens, who came on your show and is a producer of of the. Uh, Yes, I mean, it's, it's, but it's genuinely quite an interesting story yeah. because it, the, the book was written by his English teacher at school and they always used to talk about... And they always as, used to say, this would make a great film. Yeah, and then in, extraordinarily, many years later, when he actually is uh, an actor, they get a chance to do it. So it, it's sort of been a long time in the making. So one of the people that she's been with by is kind of earthy and edgy and believes in, you know, you've got to just go for it. And you've got to do something. The other guy is nice. Dan and Stevens. Dan Stevens. <laughs> the other guy is Dan Stevens, who, I mean, I have to say, I, I haven't seen Downton Abbey. But even from just seeing the trailers of Downton Abbey, it does appear to me that Dan Stevens has walked off. It's a bit like that. He is a bit like that. It yes. is. It's the same. You know, it's a bit. Although a... he looks completely different now. He's lost. He? He's lost two stones since uh, since that movie. Uh, and since he's got two stones to lose, yeah, has yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he looks about fifteen years old. So uh, he's changed. Maybe I interviewed the wrong person. Actually. Yeah, I think back, it wasn't. Dan it Stevens wasn't him at all. all. No, it was no. one of the Culkins. Anyway, so. She is apparently sort of divided in her devotions between, on the one hand, this kind of, you know, we know we know he's edgy and disreputable because he wears a hat indoors and he reads poetry in pubs in a he's, way that's actually... He's a Guardian kind of guy, isn't he? And Dan Stevens oh, really? is a telegraph. I think OK, so. fine, we'll use that analogy. So she's torn between the Guardian guy and the telegraph guy. I know more of a time... Actually, Dan Stevens is Times, I think. OK, well, whatever. She goes with the Guardian guy, who then turns out to be utterly horrible. Here's a clip. May I ask you something? Of course. When you're painting, you often hit the canvas quite hard. It's so different to Laura and, and Harold and the technique that they use to apply paint. I, it, it often looks quite... Uh, what? Clumsy? No, not, not clumsy at all. I was just wondering... Just wondering. Just wondering, were you? Better just take a bloody good look. Look at my right eye, do you see? Look at my right eye, I'm look! I'm looking. And the reason for this, my dear Florence, the reason for this clumsiness, my dear Miss Carter Wood, is that I am completely blind in my right eye. Blind is as a boy, by a blackthorn chasing a bloody silly dog, and that is why this bumps into that. So essentially what you have is a love triangle. And the reason I say it like that is because you did a whole, you know, listeners call yeah, it and yeah, give yeah, us your love, love triangle record. Love triangle oldies, yeah. The problem, however, is that in order for a love triangle to work, you have to believe that somebody is torn between two possible suitors, okay? And you go back to whatever Shakespeare, if you want to refer it back to the discussion we were having earlier on with Joss Whedon. In the case, in the case of this, the, the lack of balance is that one of these people seems really reasonable, really likeable, really nice, really solid. Dan Stevens. Dan Stevens. And the other isn't. And the problem is that what, what the drama needs in order for it to work is the sense that the Dominic Cooper character is so earthy and so, uh, you know, is so full of natural, artistic, untrammeled energy, so dangerous, so alluring, that somebody would be wooed by them, despite the fact that there is a clearly much more suitable suitor standing right next to them. And it's the vagaries of love, Mark. It's, it's, it's nothing to it's do with the vagaries it's of not love. A science, it's not. Know? It's nothing to do with the you vagaries can't of love. Predict. It's to do with the fact that 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 there is an there is a there is an unbalance in the film, which is it's not so much a love triangle as it's a love right angle with a bloke over here wearing a hat and reciting poetry in a pub that made Some people like that. No, they don't. The fact that you've never worn a beret in your life 
doesn't mean... Don't say that so certainly. I bet you As haven't. a Dexys Midnight Runners fan in the 80s, I committed many fi- crimes many crimes against berry? fashion. Have I? Yes. Yes. That would be... Terrible. Absolutely. I'm sure that photos exist. I hope that they've all been destroyed. Yeah, but yes, is. but that whole thing about... You have to believe, you know, the, the, the uptight one, the raggedy one, the guy who's, you know, well behaved, the guy who's kind of out of control and believes in painting with a It's a true story, though. That's I thing. know. And so what you believe is that in order for the true story to have worked, that there, there must have been more there. So what you, I mean, the Cornwall scenery is absolutely beautiful. The It's shot very nicely. And I've said before that when you say something shot nicely, it always sounds like you're saying it's, it, it, it is shot nicely. It does look, it does look really lovely. But the problem is the central triangle doesn't work. And the reason the central triangle doesn't work, even though in real life, there was indeed this triangular contrivance, is because I don't believe her relationship with the guy that she marries, who appears to be horrid from the po- the moment you meet him. The first moment you meet him... He reads poetry in pubs. He's quite good at that. It's not just that he reads poetry in pubs. It's that at every given opportunity, he stands... I mean, it is the kind of film in which somebody says, I'm feeling a bit, I- I'm feeling a bit heartbroken. I'm going to Africa. I'll be three years. That's fine. That's a convention. That's OK. But you have to, f- you have to believe in the guy who's wild, the guy who's crazy, the guy who's Oliver Reed. And he isn't. And that's a problem for me because I just every minute she was on screen with him being horrible to her. You just think, yeah, you know, why? 